Welcome to Rebuilding a Vintage Open Steam Launch. This is part 33, looking at the wooden hull, modifying the water bypass valve and the radio control of the rudder. Starting with the hull. As you can see here very clearly, there is a large crack along one side of the keel. I'm going to have to fix this properly. It's not just a case of fill over it and paint it. What I'm actually going to do is make a groove all the way down the side of the keel where the crack is. And first of all, I will be running some cyanoacrylate adhesive into the groove, followed by filling it and painting it. The cyanoacrylate adhesive that I normally use is medium viscosity, but for this repair I will be using the thin runny stuff because I want it to fully soak in to the crack along the keel. I get quite a lot of communications from viewers, some good, some bad, and this particular viewer said, why didn't I use an accelerator for the cyanoacrylate adhesive to make it set quicker? And my answer to that is I don't need it to set any quicker really because it sets fairly quick anyway and I like to give it time to soak into the wood. There will be an episode covering this repair in detail very shortly but for now I'm going to move on and do something else. The accessibility of this water bypass valve has been bothering me for a while so I'm going to modify it. I'd like to use the original valve because it's part of the original build. So all I did was cut off the hand wheel and extended the original shaft. I machined down a piece of quarter inch brass bar down to three sixteenths of an inch which is the diameter of the original valve spindle. Then I drilled a hole into the end of this extension piece. All I then had to do was take the original valve spindle, put it in the lathe and turn the end diameter to fit into this hole put them together, leaving a slight gap, and sealed the sole of the two parts. Then I drilled a cross hole at the end of the new spindle. I then used some Loctite 638 to hold in place this piece of stainless steel. And it's time now for a test fit of the superstructure, and it's far better. The old hand wheel is not getting in the way of the superstructure, and the crossbar is above the height of the superstructure, therefore easier to use. Over now to rudder control and I settled on a Bowden cable approach. I've found that when transporting a model boat, you will always knock the rudder. So my original idea of a closed loop system was not good really, because if the rudder got knocked in transit, it would break something. This is going to be quite a fiddly job. My initial concern was with the 90 degree angle required at the end of the Bowden cable to operate the rudder. And there's very little friction as the inner cable goes around the almost 90 degree bend. So I need to keep this cable at approximately 90 degrees. I'm going to make a former to do this. I used a piece of mahogany in the milling machine and milled a slot in it. I then repositioned the mahogany block in the machine vise so I could mill across the top in order to hold the Bowden cable at 90 degrees. It's self-explanatory if you watch the video closely. A couple of episodes ago, whilst discussing the Yorkshire dialect, I related the tale of my grandfather and the fact that he had such a broad Yorkshire accent none of us could understand what he said. And this included, please take your chair leg off my oxygen pipe, which turned out to be his last words. My grandfather's nickname was Lucky, and I don't know why, because he was the unluckiest man on the planet. For instance, if he went into a cafe and ordered in his very broad Yorkshire accent a cup of tea, the waitress would always bring him something else. Sometimes it would be toast, sometimes it would be mushy peas. And as it turns out, his bad luck did not even stop after he died. I remember the day of the funeral very well. It was a very cold day, very cold indeed, and very snowy. We got quite a few phone calls on the day from people en route to the funeral who were stuck in the snow, and most of them said, could we keep him on a low light until they got there? Eventually, all of the guests arrived, and the funeral began. At the end of the funeral service, the coffin was making its way through the curtain and suddenly all the lights went out, it was a power cut. What were we going to do? We had a quick family discussion and came up with the option that we would have to do it ourselves. So selected mourners were all given a blow lamp and disappeared into the back. And about half an hour later everything was fine. My father appeared from behind the curtain, proudly holding the urn which contained my grandfather's ashes. And just in case you think that's the end of the story, no, there's more. As the car I was travelling in was leaving the crematorium, we got stuck in the snow. So my grandmother had to throw the ashes under the back wheels for traction. Friction is a wonderful thing. I'm using some sandpaper here to round the internal dimensions of this piece of wood. The whole purpose of this part of the rebuild is just to make sure that this piece of Bowden cable stays at the right angle. 
I was hoping to get a piece of wood to go all the way round, but it kept breaking, so I had no choice but to use some epoxy on the end part. It's actually a better idea, it's a lot stronger. This clip shows me applying some grease to the inner cable. It's very important that this inner cable slides as freely as possible through this tube. And when you're threading a Bowden cable through a tube, if it should hit an obstruction, like a sudden 90 degree bend, always make sure that you rotate the cable in an anti-clockwise direction, otherwise the inner cable may unravel and then it won't go anywhere. That is only relevant to this particular cable, maybe some cables are wound the other way. This is the servo mounting for the Bowden cable, almost completed. I'm not going to cover its construction because I've already done this a couple of times in this series. The mahogany fitting at the end of the Bowden cable will be stuck underneath the stern area, but I need some more support for the Bowden cable as it goes from the stern area to the servo. These three mahogany blocks, when epoxied to the inside of the hull, will be more than sufficient to hold the cable precisely in the right position. Finishing off the servo mount, I'm drilling the pilot holes for the screws that hold the servo to the mount, and I will also be using some screws to hold the whole thing together, and it's painting time. Again, not much painting in this episode, I do apologise for the painting enthusiasts, but make the most of it. I could slow it down, but that would not be a good thing to do. So once painted, I put the servo mount on one side for the paint to dry, and in no time at all, I can place the servo in the approximate position it's going to be although it can't be this close because there is a copper pipe needs to go to the burner. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.